Hey YouTube, Atheist Vape is checking in. Today we have got the Copper 49 clone from Fastech.com. So yeah, rocking the Copper 4.9 from Fast Tech. Um, you know, overall, it's very similar to the Stainless 4.9 that I had, which was made by Infinite. I'm not exactly sure who the maker is of this. It came in a box that's very, very similar to Infinite. No guarantees, though. Again, it's from Fast Tech, so who knows. Um, but uh, when we dive up close, I will look for the box and hopefully have it uh, to show you. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I don't know where it is. But anyway. Um, you know, it looked really, really nice when I first got it, but out of any copper uh, mod I've had, this one started to turn this ugly ass, you know, dirty penny look really, really quick. If you see up close, the shiny parts there, yeah, that's what it looked like when it first came. Now, I mean, I haven't even used it that much, to be honest with you. I mean, I've definitely taken it to work a few times, you know, sweaty hands, whatever. It's been used, but it's definitely not my number one, you know, mech mod that I'm, I'm rocking. So it doesn't get a ton of use, maybe, you know, once or twice a week or so. Um, so, you know, it really took on a, a dirty copper look fast. If you like that, you know, that'll definitely be a perk. I kind of wish it had stayed a little shinier, a little longer. I know I can polish it. I know I can fix that. But, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it's a pretty cheap uh, copper that they used. Um, but, you know... Minus that, it looks pretty sexy with, you know, like the K-Fun on there. Uh, it has a really nice seamless look to it, you know, it looks like it's a hybrid connection even though it's not just because of how smooth the lines are. You know, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice mod overall. I definitely prefer the stainless uh, from Infinite. I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I actually gave that one away in a trade. I guess I didn't give it away. Well, yeah, I did give that one away. I actually did a trade uh, for a brass um, a Stingray uh, to a, a viewer who gave me a couple RDA or a few RDAs and a, and a K-Fun. Uh, and I also threw in um, <laughs> the Stainless 4.9, honestly, because I was super late on getting in this stuff and I felt really bad. So I threw in the Infinite 4.9 and kind of, a, you know, apologies for getting shit to you so late. And uh, it, it definitely is a better uh, mech mod overall. Um, but, you know, Matt did a side-by-side -side comparison with the copper versus the stainless. And he said the copper had less of a voltage drop. Uh, again, I can't compare the two. Um, but, you know, it is a copper mod, so I'm assuming it's, it's pretty good. And you have direct connection from the battery to, uh, you know, your atomizer. So, you know, it, you know it, to me, that suggests that it's definitely going to have less of a voltage drop, if anything. Um, this mech mod overall from Fast Tech for a super cheap price, I think it's like 16, 17 bucks. It's decent, um, but you know, my good friend Hijinx actually did a review on this like last week, I think, or earlier in the week. Uh, the main issue I have with this thing is the damn firing switch. And I love the receded button. That's not a problem. I like the magnetic switch. But with the copper one specifically, this sucker snags like crazy. Now Hijinx mentioned that uh, his actually would continuously fire sometimes if he didn't get it in the right place, you know, if it locked up. I haven't had that issue yet, um, so not a big problem for me. Um, but, uh, you know, it kind of is a pain in the ass to use. You got to get it on the sweet spot every time. I had the same issue with my copper uh, Nemesis. That was not from Fast Tech. That was from uh, H Cigar, I believe, that made that one. Still, it had major issues with that firing button snagging all the time. So. This is definitely a downside to this. I actually took this to work with me all the way to Seattle, and it was such a pain in the ass because I'm driving, trying to get the sweet spot, you know, not, you know, I gotta pay attention to the road, not the mod. And so I thought, oh, you know, obviously it's got the knuckle cutouts, it's gonna be perfect for a drive, but that wasn't the case. Uh, you know, it was really, really a big pain in the ass, and I wish I had brought something else. Um, but anyway, besides the firing switch, besides the quick, you know, dirty look that it took on, 
it, it's a fine mech mod, you know. Um, it holds up nice, it fits great in your pocket. I love the size. Um, but if you got more money, you could spring 30, 40 bucks, I would jump on eBay and pick up the infinite version uh, of this clone. Um, just because you're going to get a slightly better uh, mod. They do have a stainless version on Fast Tech, so maybe check that out. I don't know if that's worthwhile or not. Um, you know, I honestly just wanted a copper one, but I really didn't think it was going to be like this. So it fires great when it does, so let's do that. Oh, I got it on the sweet spot. <coughs> that was a little too intense. So I mean, it fires great. It doesn't. It's not like that. It misfires. It's just you literally have to hit it just right, uh, or else you're not going to get anything. So anyway, let's dive up close. We'll show you the innards, and then uh, we'll finish out the review. And here's our up close and personal with the Copper 49 from Fast Egg. Got our little uh, lemur monkey creature. Uh, one of you posted what this thing was actually called. I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, so uh, maybe one of you can post it in the description of this, or down in the uh, comments in this one as well. Uh, we've got the 49 engraving. Uh, it says 1932, which I was told is not a serial number, but is indeed part of the name of the original. Uh, as you can see, we've got a copper firing button on bottom. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming that allows the current to flow quite nicely. Um, we've got uh, these cutouts for our knuckle for the receded button here. So what's nice, you can just set this sucker down flat and don't have to worry about it firing. Uh, and I've never had it fire in my pocket either. So. Um, real simplistic design, um, you know, it's actually like engraved, not laser engraved, and they're deep engravings, so. Uh, originally I thought this would be kind of an issue to clean, um, but one of you had mentioned that, you know, a little bit of alcohol and an old toothbrush, you can clean that right up. Um, we've got a vent hole here at the bottom, so in case you've got any kind of issues with the battery, you've got, uh, you know, an emergency vent hole there. And uh, we got a couple up top, too. Um, so I'm not sure if that's more to allow airflow uh, for your Addy if you need airflow through the 510, but I don't know how it would really work since you know it gets trapped under the Addy. But uh, I was assuming they were for venting of the battery. Uh, anyway, here is our 510, and as you can see, it's a hybrid, so it just makes direct contact with your Addy to the top of the battery. Uh, I am using a flat top battery in here in 18650 mode. Um, you know, at its current mode. It is uh, 79 millimeters long, so it gets its name 49 from its 18350 mode. Uh, when you have an 18350 battery in here, uh, which would be both of these parts gone, uh, so just this section here, uh, it would be 49 millimeters long. So that's its name, the 49. Uh, and you got 18500 mode, and again we're in 18650 mode. Now. All of the threading was great except for this very, very top cap. Uh, you can see the seam there. Let's see if I can get a little better zoom up action here. Uh, anyway, if you can see that there, um, I cannot get this top cap off for the life of me. Now, for 18650 mode and 18500 mode, that's not an issue. But if I wanted to rock this thing in its smallest mode at 49 uh, millimeters, I couldn't do it because I cannot get this off. And I'm worried. Um, that if I try to use any tools that I currently own, I'm just going to end up shredding the thing. So I'm just kind of stuck using the 18650 mode um, since I don't even own an 18500 battery. Uh, but you know, not a big deal. Uh, it's still really, really small even uh, with 18650 mode. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to just rock it in 18350 mode, you know, for the review, uh, just to show off how tiny it really is. Uh, but you know, don't always get what you want. Again, all the threading is great for the rest of the mod. Uh, just that part was kind of an issue. As you can see, it uses magnets in here, and so the battery just kind of floats there. Um, so that's uh, when you push the, the button, you know, that's when you get your contact. Um, but yeah, it's a real simple setup here. Uh, here's our top cap. Um, we've got uh, black Delrin for an insulator up top. Uh, and again, you just make direct contact through the 510 onto the top of your battery. They do recommend uh, nipple top batteries. I just have a flat top, um, you know, Sony batteries. So that's what I own. That's what I'm using. But it is set up to be able to use those because you get this little extra kind of magnet to give you the extra space you need to rock um, the, uh, the flat top battery. Um, it uses three magnets all together, uh, and I believe you would only need to use uh, the two, so just this piece and the buttons magnet if you, uh, 
if you have a nipple top battery but uh, it's working just fine for me here's our button again we got our magnet and just use the opposing poles to push uh, your your battery uh, and the button to make contact so again so if you have the flat top battery use this extra magnet here to give you that little extra gap just slaps on like such kind of get that straight on there um, the switch is kind of a pain to get back into the tube uh, once you take it out so if you can avoid taking it out I would suggest doing so um, I basically just use my pinkies and kind of wedge it back down in there Let's see if we can do this on film <laughs> show off how much of a pain this really is. Oh, do we got it? Oh, so close. All right, I'm going to pause it real quick. All right, got it back in there. Uh, apologies, that took a little bit longer than I had hoped. <laughs> uh, but anyway, real simple. Just throw it all back together. Again, all the threading is real nice, so I don't know why that top cap is such a pain to get off. Uh, this is actually some of the nicer threading I've seen on a copper mod. Um, and it feels pretty quality in the hand, even though it is, you know, it's obviously cheap copper uh, due to the fact that it just got so dirty so quick. Um, uh, apologies for my dirty fingernails. Uh, I sell fruit <laughs> multiple times throughout the week, and, you know, that's, that fruit crap just gets everywhere. And no matter how much I wash my hands, there's always the residue of uh, the grit and fruit <laughs> under my fingernails. It's pretty gross, but uh, that's the way it is. Anyway. That is our up close with the Copper 4.9. Uh, again, it's it's pretty pretty good minus this kind of firing switch. If you don't get it dead on, it just doesn't want to fire. So that's my main issue with this sucker. But otherwise, it's a fine mech mod, and for the price, uh, you can't complain. You know, you get what you pay for, people. And for under 20 bucks, uh, it seems to work just fine. All right, let's get back to the review. So, you know, overall, honestly, when it performs, it performs fantastic. So, coming from Fast Tech, being almost, you know, under 17 bucks, I really can't complain. So, if you have a really low budget and, and you want to get a mech mod, it is worth checking out. But do know, it's going to be frustrating when it comes to that damn firing button. I don't know if that's going to be the case with all of them. Again, the stainless one might be slightly better. Um, but I do know Hijinx had this issue with his copper one. I'm having a similar issue. So I'm assuming if you get a copper 4.9 from Fastec, you're going to have a shitty firing button as well. Maybe you won't, though. So maybe you'll get lucky. Um, so I'm not going to give this thing two thumbs up. I'm not going to say run out and get it. I say get the infinite version. That one I definitely give two thumbs up. And that one kicks ass. And, and you know, I think they have a copper one from infinite as well. That might be way better, too. So if you got 30, 40 bucks, jump on that thing. If you don't though, and you have less than twenty dollars to spend, you're still going to get va you know great vapor from this thing. It's still going to work. You're just going to get a little frustrated sometimes. But I mean, when it works, <laughs> it works. Um, with the K fun, it's fantastic. So I'm rocking some Satanis from Imperium Romanum. They're actually going to send me some of their special reserve, like age juice. I think it was age and like whiskey barrels or something. I, I don't know all the details. I'll, I'll share that when I get it, but pretty excited for that. So stoked to do that review. It's a, it's a rare juice. So um, they're a great company. Uh, and I'm actually, I, it's super delayed, but for you VIP people who order stickers, I'm giving away two of these bottles and they are so good. So bear with me. It's going to happen. Uh, I'm just getting the last of the stickers sent out to people who ordered them and actually going to have to reorder myself another batch. So that's kind of a good thing. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's my review for the Copper 4.9 uh, from Fast Tech. Should you get it, it really comes down to the budget you have. You know, if you really can't afford something better, yeah, I think it's, it's worthwhile. It's a nice mech mod uh, overall minus the firing button issues. If you get it in the sweet spot every time though and you know how it has to be, you know, if you're just holding it and you're not putting it down while you're driving or something, it's probably going to be fine for you. So, so yeah, anyway, that's the Copper 4.9. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to like my video, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, uh, and you know, stick around because we're going to have all kinds of giveaways for you good people. So yeah. Uh, if you don't know already too, I'm giving away the Enigma, uh, Stainless Enigma from AngelSigs.com. So if you want to get that, jump on that, uh, check out that video, and you'll get all the details. So yeah, peace and love you too. Atheist Vapist is out. 
Psych, I didn't really go. Uh, I forgot to mention before I go, uh, if you would like to enter and win an Atheist Vapus logo tee, just leave a comment in the comment section and post that you would like to enter. Uh, otherwise, just comment like normal. Um, I've got medium and large left. Uh, I apologize. I know that that's not the size that everyone is, and in no means was I, or in no way was I trying to, uh, you know, suggest that oh, you should be a medium or a large. It's just I thought that you know more people would kind of be in that range, and so I ordered more of those overall. Turns out that's not the case. So anyway, I'm an idiot. If I do this again, I'll make sure to get many more in extra large and small because there is a wide range of sizes in all of us. Uh, but anyway, if you are in the medium or large range or you know someone that you would want to give this to or whatever, just post in the comment section that you want to win one and you can. Again, I apologize for those of you who do it doesn't fit, uh, but hey, maybe you can win it and turn it into something else. So anyway, <laughs> if you want to win that, post in the comments. Peace, love YouTube. I'm out.